northern leg of the Silken Way. To the left of us is the old Shropshire Canal, just up in that embankment. So we're climbing up here now, and the left turning, that takes you into Hinksay and Sturchy Pools. The right turning over the bridge, which was an old tramway, that takes you off towards the Sturchy Chimney. So this area here used to be the old ironworks. There used to be a big ironworks on the right hand side, but also on the left hand side here, you can see the tunnel there. Now this area was originally a nail works, um, but all over the area that it's been famous for ironworks, etc. But there's one of two or three of these different tunnels um, built into this sort of um, bank. Um, and it's rumoured that the tunnel itself, it goes for quite a way. But a lot of really rumours said that the tunnel actually went under the Ever Ready factory, which is not strictly true. It's actually got a bend to the left. So we're coming out of this sort of woodland area and it opens up a little bit now. So you'll be able to see to the right, you'll be able to see Sturchy Chimney. And then there's a beautiful old sort of meadow um, or a horse field to the left hand side, which will be coming up into view shortly. But this is the Silken Way that we're on here, the 14 mile long distance um, footpath. And um, very, as you can see, very popular with uh, dog walkers. You can see the meadow now to the right hand side. It's a very nice um, view over the town park from up there. Um, and that can be accessed from Dark Lane. Right in front of us, we can see the big coppice. This is one of many big coppices that the TDC planted out. Um, and if you go straight on, it's a bit of a shortcut up onto Dark Lane. Um, but there's lots of beautiful species of trees, really tall ones in there, lots of um, evergreens, etc. Now, this is an original lane here that would have led down probably to the ironworks. It goes over a bridge and then would have opened up sort of by the Reeking Chemical Works. A really old lane. You can see those old hedgerows left and right well we're back up onto dark lane here now um, and this is the road that runs from finger road in dorley right the way originally through the dark lane village and off up to prasley but this sort of it's been sort of resurrected here and this is now the one of the main accesses into the telford town park you can see that coppice that I mentioned um, on the right hand side now, but on the left hand side is the rugby ground home to the Talford Hornets and two strange random detached houses up there were built, which is quite um, <laughs> which is quite weird and a lot of people do ask me about that. We're going across the um, the Mallinsley to Town Park to Mallinsley to Randley Pool Culvert. On the right hand side now is the site of the new exotic zoo and this car park here on the right is the new Dark Lane car park. Um, and this brings us nicely to the gate into the town park itself. On the left hand side there was actually a row of cottages there which were called Stone Row. Um, which were really nice, really nice cottages. Now, on the left-hand side, we have Withley Pool, um, but we're on Dark Lane now. So this was one of the main lanes through Telford originally, but some great species of trees here as well. You can see these beautiful old oak trees that line the lane. And this lane originally was actually quite overgrown, and it was almost like going for a green tunnel where, I just imagine that's where it got its name, Dark Lane. You can see these tall trees again, another coppice of trees to the right hand side, which is now the home of our aerial extreme um, feature in the Taffer Town Park, plus the Rangers Hut. And um, also there's Mallinsley Chapel there. And that originally, that chapel was originally, originally in the middle of the Taffer Town Centre, which was... Um, quite interesting but we're on the dark lane now you can see the other pool over to the right hand side um, and you can see coming into view the modern day um, south water um, complex there and you can see the hotel and the cinema 
Um, we're coming down now and on the right hand side is the International Centre. Um, this is Telford's own venue for exhibitions etc. And this interesting sort of timeline here on the left hand side that tells you a bit of history about Telford over the years and that was done for the Telford 50. So yep, yeah, you can see the new car park here on the left hand side, the new multi-storey, one of many that's been built and the International Centre. So this brings us um, quite nicely onto um, the road into the town centre, as you can see. Um, and the original first multi-storey car park there on the uh, to right in front of us, um, that was built on one of, the, one of the first ones and lots of multi-storey car parks have, um, have been introduced since then. So we're coming into Hollins Wood now, the top end of Hollins Wood, and on the right hand side is a lot of the flats. So we're going to take um, a left turning now, slightly up, because the Silken Way goes that way, and that will bring us right up next to Matheson House, one of Telford's kind of premier office blocks. Um, I think it's owned by Cap Gemini now, um, but originally owned by EDS, and believe it or not, both buildings e that EDS owned, which was Matheson and Boyd House, were both linked between each other with an underground tunnel that used to be uh, that used to be there um, it's been filled in now because Boyd House has been demolished but um, Matheson House has still got plenty of life left in it um, you can see now this paved sort of pathway here this is quite a nice um, addition to the town centre where they've started doing these like shared space um, footpaths and stuff but actually it really enhanced um, the footpath there um, on the left hand side you can see the site of the former Asda petrol station that's been derelict that site for a long long time so now we're at the roundabout this is actually where the tunnel passes underneath and actually underneath there in the middle of the roundabout you can actually see a set of steps which take you down into there so right in front of us was the site of Boyd House um, owned by EDS or better known as the uh, tax office um, these crossings are really nice these are really nice block paving on these these crosses but this is the section of road here that links down to Holland's Gate interchange that they just keep changing but Boyd House that site's been empty for a long long time and I think it's going to become the station quarter um, development that's uh, hopefully going to start in 2021 so we're coming along now and um, this is Lawn Central, this is always known as Lawn Central and the bridge in front there is the bridge that runs from the side of b to the side of Derby House which Derby House is coming into view. Derby House is one of the most iconic office blocks really in Telford, one of the original um, Dallas style architectural designed um, building actually designed by Telford Development Corporation Architects so this is kind of our like business district here um, the, how, the the hoarding that's on the left hand side that was the site of um, Reynolds House named after William Reynolds on the right hand side is Kendall Court that was originally um, built for NatWest and Telford and Reekin Council's main office there is Adam Brook House um, and you can just see there the Telford Plaza coming into view right now. As we come round the corner here, nice entrance here to the new bridge which is called the Silver Swallow. Um, it's recently been named that. I think a lot of people wanted it called, be, to be called the Cinderloo Bridge, but that wasn't meant to be. But actually, it is a marvel of um, um, architectural it is an architectural marvellous and an award-winning bridge as well so well worth it and you can just see that back it almost looks like the a fin doesn't it um as we come down we'll leave the business district now and we are coming down onto rampart way now the rampart way itself is very interesting because the ramparts were actually created by the soil and overburden that was excavated from the 
um, Greyhound section of the Eastern Primary. Now, Rampart Way hasn't always been a dual carriageway. That's only been recently um, been changed into a dual carriageway um, due to the rising demands of traffic in Telford. Um, but originally, it was a single, um, a single, a single lane carriageway. Um, you can see the silver swallow now in front of the bridge. Um, quite a spectacle when that was uh, dropped into place. Um, it is a beautiful shaped bridge, isn't it? And it's got such a wide span on it. So the path now, we're now onto this section of the Silken Way that sort of takes us off into Oaken Gates. And we are running alongside the um, Eastern Primary. Um, heading north and coming up now is the crossover with the M54, the M54 subway, um, which you can see now. You can just about see that it's autumn, it's uh, spring as well, and blossom is on the trees, which is really, really nice. You can see when this was actually um, filmed, that immense concrete motorway bridge look. So we're coming up now the side of the Eastern Primary. Now this actually was the route of the original railway and the original canal, which actually ran down in that dip where the EP currently is now. So we're now going to take a right turn in and we are going to go over the bridge, over the Eastern Primary. Believe it or not, originally on the left hand side, the path used to carry on up and over a, over a bridge, over the motorway and into um, Old Park. But this was actually proposed for um, an actual link road that was going to come off Forge Interchange and link up with Central Park. Because obviously Central Park, they had big plans for that. Um, but actually, I don't think it was ever built to capacity. But this is the original, this original um, path roadway was actually called Hollingswood Road. Um, because this area was actually known as Hollingswood rather than Sneds Hill. But this is the railway bridge, and um, if you can actually see off the side there, you can you can get a really good view from the trains coming through. But this is the area Sneds Hill. Sneds Hill was a owned by a large company that was called the Lilishaw Company, which they had their offices in um, in Prasley Hall. But here, this was the epicenter of their business, where they had rolling mills, steel, they manufactured locomotives, they had brickworks everything it was a it was a, a massive industry and you could be seen the chimneys from the Lilishaw company could be seen forever unfortunately the Lilishaw company um sort of demised in the late 80s and um, this site was reclaimed and um purchased and this modern style kind of office area was um was was created here called central park and central park is the home to lucy allen she has an office here i think cap gemini also have offices here as well but the silken way slices right through here but also when cable cable tv came to telford in the early 90s midlands cable communications stroke telewest they also had their office here in a really big um, sort of satellite dish but yeah, it's, um, I mean, most of the offices are occupied, but there's a great deal of land and space left here for future development, which we've just never done. So the Silken Way does come up here now, and this is sort of the rise up to, right, the rise up to Sneds Hill um, as we come up. Just in the distance, you're going to be able to start to see the top of Sneds Hill. Well, Sneds Hill's quite a high sort of mount um, in Telford. And as you look at it from the EP, it is quite tall. And you can just see the houses that are just on the corner of St. Jo the road into St. George's up there. You can just see them. Um, I think they were housing association houses. But we're actually coming on to the Hollyhead Road at the moment. The Hollyhead Road Diversion. Um, because as we know the Romans built the um, Watling Street through the middle of Oaken Gates but obviously that got quite narrow so this was kind of like the diversion but it's also known as the Schiffnell Road as well um, which is uh, runs right the way through here in Greyhound so right ahead of us as we know there's the Aldi store and the Wix's store but that was actually the site of the original brickworks 
that was there, the Lillishaw Brickworks. Um, they had a quite a big site there, um, and I think a lot of the building there was ravaged by fire. So we're now just heading up now. The Silken Way takes a very sort of funny dog leg now. Um, and you can see over there, look, you can see Telford in the, in the distance there. You can see the um, plaza there. But um, the path for the Silking Way, for a main footpath, this bit of the pathway here looks quite narrow, really, doesn't it? Considering it's one of Telford's main footpaths, really. Um, I don't think it's that it's that narrow. You'd never get a pushchair or anything past there. So we're going to take, you can see the first Silking Way wheel there. That's giving us an indication. So we've got a bit of a hill climb here. Um on a bike pretty painful not so bad walking so this sort of takes us up onto sort of snedzil so it is it is a fair bit of a climb but actually it's worth the view at the top um because this kind of goes right at the back of aldi this does so you can look down and you can get really good views over old park the retail park over there and the rest of telford but also some great views of the reeking ketley bank and beyond So there's some great views across Ketley Bank up here. So it's actually well worth the climb for the uh, views. But considering this is one of Telford's main footpaths, it is getting quite narrow, isn't it? Um, this fence here on the left-hand side has been up here for ages, even since from when it was a brickworks. So if you go off now to the right, there's a sort of small gap through the, uh, through the bushes. That will take you up right onto the top of Sneds Hill. And the actual um, viewpoint from up there is beautiful, especially great sunsets and sunrises over the reek. If you'd like to, if that's the sort of thing you like. But um, you can see we're getting up there. And you can see the pit mound, the, the Sneds Hill is still going up to the uh, right hand side of us. So we're just gradually climbing. I think we've kind of reached the height of what the footpath's actually going to be at. But this is really the point where you're going to really start to get the views now, as you can appreciate. There's almost a panoramic view over, over Telford, really. You can see um, the plaza, the retail park at Old Park, the pit mounds at Old Park, and then obviously the Reakin. But from here, it's downhill all the way now. So if you're on a bike, you can get some, get some speed up down here. But this kind of brings us along the side of the eastern primary now the eastern primary is quite a way below um because this is just one big big bank coming up you can see the act the bottom access to sneds hill is off to the right there with the, that flight of steps but we are flying down here now and you can see up on that hillside look at the plant in there those evergreens there um beautiful tdc planting um that fence on the left is just basically um just basically saving you from a sheer drop that's on the other side so we're coming out now and we're sort of on cannon gate now which is coming out of oaken gates so if you carry on down that will take us into oaken gates and over the eastern primary um the, over the eastern primary bridge but we're going to carry on. The actual Silken Way path is running to the left on that footpath that's just not too far away. But it's just a bit easier for me to come down this way. So this is Snedzel Industrial Estate. It's um, it's only a small kind of small place, really. Um, I think it's it's got um, it's got. I think this is a, it's a cement works, etc., and a couple of other places. It's worth noting, though, actually, there's another little mound to the side of us now, which is called Albion Bank. Another great little place to go and walk. Some great views, all planted with these beautiful, luscious pine trees. So we're now coming on to Station Road. So Station Road is here. Um, the original route of the Silken Way took us straight across into Willows Road, but it was changed due to issues with um, residents in rock, parts of Rockwoodine Woods. So the new route actually takes us the way I'm going now, down Station Hill. 
So as you come down, you can actually see on the left hand side, you can see the chapel there. That was the chapel that was converted to the stay project by um, Challenge Annika back in those days when uh, when that was a popular TV programme. But in front of us now, you can actually see the mighty Oaken Gates flyover on the Eastern Primary. It just, it's quite a structure really, that is. On the right hand side we've got the old WRVS building, quite a nice building and on the left hand side is the former uh, police station. So as we come up here now this will take us on to the bottom part of the Silkin Way now. This is the next section that's going to link us up to Stafford Road. So you can see again the path's quite a, a bit of a car park here, a little bit of a um, open car park here. It's like as you can see, it's used by taxis. But this, where where um, where Willow's Road is, this actually joins joins onto there. It's just a little foot above. So we're actually following the. You can see the Eastern Primary to the left hand side, just where that post and rail fence is. So we're going down this nice sort of green open space here to the right hand side. Um, and say we're still on the Silken Way now. Okay, now the original Silken Way um, runs to the top of this actual bank, the top of the bank here, as you can see on the right hand side of the top there. It was like I say, it was diverted down here to go across Station Road rather than going to the back of um, Rockwood Dome Wood. I think it was due to the fact that residents were complaining that. And one of the main footpaths in Telford were going through their basically through their back garden, so that was altered very, very quickly. But again, that beautiful mix of trees that are here, those beautiful pine trees look and evergreens, etc. So now we're coming on to Stafford Road. Now the Silken Way pretty much just crosses straight over here. On the left hand side, this is the part of um, the Eastern Primary where we've got the big strata wall. Um, which we know was advertised in that popular BMW advert in the 1980s. But this is the road now that takes you, Stafford Road takes you into Rockwood Iron Wood. So we're going to cross the road here and nice little copies of trees here. Um, we'll cross here and the Silken Way now is going to take us down into Wombridge. So Stafford Road, you can see up the lane there, there was a, a pub's. There was a pub there, quite a busy little road out of um, Oaken Gates at one time. So again, following the um, Eastern Primary down now, this will take us down to Wombridge. Pretty much most of what's on the right hand side is Wombridge and Rockwood Iron Wood. It's, uh, it's been cut up and split up into different, um, different areas, um, so it's difficult to know what's what really. So we're coming down, down the bank now, um, still on the Silken Way, and we are now going to come to the bottom of one of the streets in Rockwood Iron Wood, stroke one bridge. <laughs> so the, the path now comes around this corner, but we're going to take a sharp left now, and that's going to take us under the bridge, actually into one bridge. Now you can see the path's a lot wider now, so it's a double path. Signpost to the Silken Way, and we are now going under the Eastern Primary. Now, right in front is kind of One Bridge, One Bridge Common, I suppose they call it. But actually, One Bridge Common, underneath that big mound there, is actually a big, massive sewage storage tank there that the council put in a long time ago. But you can see now we've got a decent path here. We've got a mixed path and cycleway here which is what you want isn't it um, and this is going to bring us right to the bottom of one bridge road and you'll be able to see um one bridge priory as well believe it or not where we're actually where we actually are now originally this was actually a a, a small reservoir um running along here um because the canal wasn't too far away either um, but you can see Wombridge Farm would be there to the left and um, the original um, ch uh, original chapel that would have been um, here a long, long, long time ago before Wombridge. So that's kind of what it's named. It's quite historic, a priory, like it was an original priory. We're going straight on. Again, off to the right, takes you into Rockwood Iron Wood over the Eastern Primary. 
But we're going down now, so we're going sort of towards um, middle pool. So the footpath goes sh pretty much straight on, really, but this way bends around anyway. So the whole point of the Silking Way is for it to travel through North Telford and South Telford, but to take in some of the best, the best historic points of the particular area. So now we're uh, crossing under the what we call the Dorley to Donington distributor road. Um, nice little sort of underpass this is. This was recently featured in a film by Luke Allen. Um, this has brought us now to Middlepool. Middlepool was originally a reservoir for the Shropshire Canal, um, which didn't run too far away from me, just over a trench, and you could actually see the big pump post that was on the top of Middlepool. But Middlepool now is an important um, lake in the Telford drainage system. You can see the big outlets here, um, and I think there's actually here, it holds the record for the most geese in one area. The birds here are crazy. There's absolutely loads of them. But a lot of culverts running in and out of here. And it's one of them, one of Telford's um, main balancing reservoirs for this particular area. But still a beautiful place to come and have a walk around. Um, you can see this side here, it's actually got a dam, as you can see. We're actually built on a on a dam. So it is a real functioning um, reservoir. Um, again, a great array of trees here, look, as you can see. So we'll carry on with the Silking Way now, and um, we are sort of heading off now towards Trench. And we're talking the Trench where we're talking the other pool, Trench Pool. So this is kind of what we'll take, this pathway will take us. So you can see, the pathways improve so you've got that dedicated path, um, cycleway and um, footpath here which makes a big difference for us cyclists and walkers oops this guy's not looking where he's going um you can see it's actually very very busy and this is during lockdown you know so we're going back over the eastern primary so the silken way took you that way so you go around um you actually go around middle pool which was which is good so you know it's taking in all of those features so right in front of us now we're in Teague's Crescent now to that sort of neck of the woods so in front is Teague's Bridge School and this is I think it's called Capewell Road I think it is um, and we come down and we're actually where the original Shropshire Canal went and this was part of the this was a huge incline plane that took you right to the top and right at the bottom of the incline plane was the Shropshire Arms pub, better known now as the Blue Pig. Um, this reservoir here, again, it's another one, Trench Pool is another reservoir. You can see how close we are to the EP as well. That's just right next to us on the left-hand side. So this is quite a rough old gravel track this is here, but you know, trench pool is a big, big old pool really. So we're just coming down now on the right hand side is the main um, outlet for the pool but again nice place to walk around so now we're coming up towards the end of the eastern primary which is called trench lock interchange now this has been changed many many times and if they just stuck to the original taffer plan it would have had a road running right under it so this is trench road here now Trench Road is part of the, it is the Newport Road and that runs from Wellington so that would have been a bit of a long distance, um, a long distance um, road that would have been and a main route through, uh, through Telford. So the Eastern Primary carries on so we're picking up some signage now for the Silken Way and some of the old signs. Um, you'll start to see in a minute so here's the um, here's what we call new trench road the a518 
Um, this was built to relieve the, the the traffic from going through Trench and Donington. So nice, little, a completely crazy road system here. Um, and also speed cameras here, which uh, I have been uh, busted on before now. So always take a bit of extra care coming through this area. Um, as we're coming around the interchange, you'll start to see the road. Well, this was the road into Horton Wood. Um, and before Horton Wood was an industrial estate, Horton Wood was just known because it was actually a sewage works there. It used to be the main sewage works. Um, but this is now one way. Now you can see these beautiful, authentic silken way signs here. Just take a look at these. They're really nice, aren't they? Um, shows we're on the right path, doesn't it? So we're trying to take the most authentic silken way route that there is. So we're now heading. I don't even even class this as the EP anymore. This bit really, um, but it is the sort of um, back spine road of um, of Telford. Um, on the left hand side of this road we've got um, Denso and um, Denso and GK and Sankey um, that used to be there uh, BA systems I think it is um, really good cycle paths here look you can see that on the right hand side we've got Horton Wood there um, and Horton Wood got its name really A because of it being close to the village of Horton, but also there was a lot of trees in Horton Wood. There's a lot of oak, isolated oak trees, etc. There. So on the left hand side, we would have the um, the gardens of Denso, the award winning um, ecological gardens that they've built there. Um, very, very nice. Um, over on the right, you can see Horton Woods, Paul Roscoe. A lot of big businesses in Horton Wood, such as Epson, oh, to name a few, quite a popular, quite a popular business park, and it also just goes to show how flourishing business is in Telford. I mean, Denso, this is a huge, huge site, isn't it? So we're crossing the road now, and we're at what we call the area is Hadley Park. Now this is an area that's grown immensely. You can see we've got the fallow field here. Also, that Denso roundabout with that beautiful landscaping on there. But the fallow field, that's now been joined by a new petrol station, a screw fix, a Greggs, all of those type of things, but also some industrial units. And the company building these are Morris Properties um, from Shrewsbury. And these sort of um, units are the same sort of units that they've built at Battlefield Enterprise um, Park in... Um, in Shrewsbury. Now the quarrying buildings here, you can see there's three of them that look the same. They actually have stood there on their own in the middle of nowhere for ages. On the right hand side you can see how Horton Wood has expanded massively and these big big units here, these big warehouses have started appearing. So it just shows to goes to show how much Telford is actually expanding with these new businesses. So we're now coming on, we're back on the Silken Way now, and we're coming in this well-defined hedge here, look, and we're sort of just coming into Hadley Park now. We're not too far away from the windmill, really, but you can see Hadley Park House, which was a very popular um, venue for weddings and things like that. So we're now joining on to what would have been the main road from Lee Gomery um, into Hadley Park because there wouldn't have been another road into there. Um, and this is quite an old lane, this is really. And you can see there's some beautiful old trees along here as well. Um, beautiful day for it, look, the sun's sort of glistening. You can still see the Hadley Park, um, it, sort of business park to the left hand side. And the new houses have been built on the right, on the right hand side, um, surrounded by that big fence. And what's really nice on the left hand side, they've actually put a new pond there, like a new sort of small lake, to um, to deal with the water from um, the new business parks and the housing areas as you can see so you can see lots of old trees here and this is all originally um originally a park or all parkland setting so you can see the new houses there on the right hand side and we are just coming up to the shropshire canal again now 
Um, I mean, look at this beautiful oak tree here on the right hand side. Beautiful, isn't it? Um, and this is where the canal, the canal um, crossed here. So you can see this lock, the original guillotine lock here. Beautiful, it really needs restoring. Real Telford heritage here. Um, and the Shropshire Canal just cut straight through here originally. Um, and you can see, as I turn around, you can actually see the bed of the canal. Now, there's two of these locks. There's another one a little bit further up. But it's such a shame um, that it's in the condition it is, really. And I think it really could do with um, with saving. The Silken Way has been brought this way for that very reason, um, for us to admire that. So it'd be nice to see that, that maybe looked after and uh, renovated one day. So we continue on. We're on that lane which takes us, um, which takes us from Lee Gomery to Havley Park, um, and opening up on the right and the left hand side now are the new housing estates that have, been, have actually been built at Havley Park. You can see that they've kept the authentic look of these hedges and created this kind of village lane type type thing. But you can see just through the bushes there, you can actually see some of the, the new tree plant in there. So we're going to cross over Oakhampton Road now, which is the road into this new house and estate. So we'll just go straight across it as the crow flies. So this will lead us on to Hadley Park Road. So as you can see, this lane just carries on. Very, very popular with walkers, as you can see. It gets very, very busy. Um, and we can come through, you can, like I say, you can see the um, the, the, the old hedge lines, etc. along here. Great little cycling route this is. So you can start to see the houses of Hadley Park Road coming in. So Hadley Park Road was basically the road that linked up to Horton, um, Preston under Wheel Moors and that sort of linked up into Hadley then onto Ketley so this was quite a popular road so really this was quite a main road back in the day and it had a lot a couple of pubs along it you can see a lot of houses but a lot of the council housing was built along here it's got a little corner shop etc you know so it's it's really really good so the Silken Way sort of comes up this narrow sort of path here um, and I have to say the signage is awful for this, considering this was one of Telford's sort of premier original footpaths. So the Silking Way kind of goes a little bit on, but then sort of turns. Um, I'm going to just go a slightly different way, um, only because I think it's just worth being able to show you this. But you can see how narrow it is along here. You wouldn't think this is the, the Silking Way through Telford, would you? Um, but there's the shop there so we're going to take um, a right turning now and this is a little lane that cuts us back but it shows you a little bit of the um, the the Hurley Brook the Hurley Brook that's that's down here um, that sort of runs right the way through like the open water channel open water channel that actually runs through the middle of kind of that part of Lee Gomery. So as we come out in a minute, you'll see the Hurley Brook right in front and we'll sort of take a left and sort of follow the Hurley Brook along. But it's a nice place to walk, walk this sort of pathway because it takes you to the roundabout um, at the at, at the sort of top of the, the sort of top end of Lee Gomery. But as you can see, it's a nice track. You can see the new houses that have been built off Hadley Park Road there. But it's a lovely little woodland track, it really is. So now we're going to take a right turn in and that's going to take us over the Hurley Brook. You can see the Hurley Brook is down below. Now this is an original road as well. This would have taken us to Wellington if we'd have followed it. And right in front of us is Lee Gomery Mill. Now this is an absolute beautiful, beautiful um, hidden addition to Telford really. You've got the, the mill and that house next to it. Now the mill itself was destroyed by fire in the 80s. 
and the whole thing has been rebuilt completely and they've done a really good job of it and on the left hand side they've renovated the water wheel which is actually still there so it shows that the Hurley Brook actually ran um, through through this particular area so now we're actually coming through the Lee Gomery section now this is actually designed to be a very informal lane and um, <laughs> it's, it's interesting that the Silken Way actually cuts right through a housing estate <laughs> but these actual houses are quite architect designed you know they're actually very very um, different to any other houses that have been built in Telford you know um, you can just see here by this kind of offset dog leg in the pathway you know and the block paver and it's sort of trying to lead you through through the development so we're now on I think it's Legate Avenue so we're actually going to cross over the road and this will take us up to Lee Gomery Centre so this is quite an old area here. Originally there would have been quite a lot of um, old cottages and stuff like that. And there's one or two just tucked away. And you can actually see the old farmhouse there, which is now the Lee Gate Centre. Um, and if anywhere, it is rich in heritage. Now on the right hand side would have been the original parader shops that were originally built here. And they had a pub. I think it was called the Thomas Telford. That was over there on the right hand side. But... Um, it has changed a hell of a lot. The new shops that are there now, as you can see, that new parade of shops. But I believe that Red Row wanted to build over 100 houses, small houses on this development here, this particular plot. And I'm so glad it, that it was a smaller um, a smaller project like what was built. You can see the houses on the right hand side. Um, you know, it isn't as um, oppressive. So we're now going underneath um, underneath the road again, the distributed road in Lee Gomery, and this brings us up into the realms of Apley Park. So these would have been originally um, wagonways into the the grand estate. So you can see how the trees are all lined up here. Um, and planted in that kind of way that would draw you into the, the manor house. And the thing is about Apley Park, I think there's been about three different individual um, stately homes there. Um, but the grounds are absolutely immense. And I, I think Apley Park is a, a real sort of jewel in the crown in Telford. A lot of people like to go there. Unfortunately, they're building houses on the right hand side. You'll start to see them coming in view. Um, they're being built by Kia. Um, I'm not sure whether they're in keeping, but um, that remains to be seen. But you can see these beautiful trees, that classic stately home sort of tree planting scheme um, that they've done there. But you can see it's so busy along here. But it's a nice straight path, and uh, that's what I like about it. It leads you straight into Apley Park. Now, it's a bit of a wonder why the Silken Way didn't actually um go through the middle of Appley park but it actually doesn't because you'll see in a second that we actually take a left turn in and we sort of skirt around the outside you can see the woodland there but our pathway goes off to the left and sort of covers it, it go around the outside but actually a great place to visit Appley park and um not a massive amount of parking there really i think that really needs to be improved but as we come up, we're sort of leaving the housing behind on the left hand side and that is then overtaken by the hospital. Believe it or not, the hospital itself was originally going to be built in Nedge Hill in Sturchley um, and that was the original sort of plan back in the day. But after fighting um, hammer and tong for a hospital, eventually Apley was chosen for the site of the hospital. And to be fair, it's grown and grown and grown over the um it's grown and grown and grown over the years and it's um it's a hell of a big site but you can still see there's still a lot of green space there for expansion. Um but you can see now the silken way you can see that the remnants of autumn are still on the ground here, those compacted leaves over to the right is the little pool at Apley. You can see the, the trackway there going into there. 
Um, but who remembers the um, originally before parts of the hospital were built? They actually had a car boot on the site originally, like a little bit of a market going on. But we're coming up now. We're still at the. We're still between Apley Park and the hospital. You can see the new women's and or oh, it isn't new anymore. The women's and children's unit, which is on the left hand side, and um, you know. So yeah, it is always a bit weird why they didn't end up taking the Silken Way right the way through Apley Park. I thought that would have been um, been more more sensible. So now we're beginning to sort of um, come around the sort of top end of Apley Park now. And on the left hand side, you can start to see the seven hospice there. Um, their building is there, just in there. And they've got some beautiful little gardens in there. So on the right hand side now, you can start to see Apley Castle Gardens Farm. Um, and this was actually converted by Shropshire Homes, this whole area. Um, great, great, great scheme. Um, and it included the old castle that was there well it wasn't really a castle it was more of a um a kind of stables built out of parts of the castle really um but great scheme lots of new houses were built there and lots were converted so as you can see you can see all the daffodils are out so we know what time of year it is and uh, we are now coming up over towards whitchurch drive which is the old a442 um as we come up here the one on the right hand side is the field that's sort of the back end of Maxell um, when Maxell was there. That site is earmarked for a big new housing development, um, which is uh, which is uh, going to be probably do dominating that land eventually there. So as we come over, we're just coming around the corner and we will be going over Whitchurch Drive, OK, over the bridge, as you can see. So this originally, this road, Whitchurch Drive, is actually wide enough to take a dual carriageway and this bridge has been designed to take a dual carriageway underneath, even though it is a single carriageway. So we are now going to take a left turn in. So we're going down now. Now this is the original A442 that came, which basically is the Kidderminster to Whitchurch Road. This is where it came down and went straight across um that was cut off and then they replaced it with the uh, western district road now on the right hand side is a small development of georgian style houses called the savannas um, and that was built by westbury homes i mean jennings homes forgive me um and they've built these regency houses but the local group savannah were actually they named their band actually after that after those had that housing development in the savannas i think these are the streets even called the savannas so there it is savannas is on the, the right hand side now on the left hand side we've got parts of the north of wellington now and right in front of us on the sort of right that is the original charlton school there um, the site is pretty much derelict and information a little bit of information from that some of the when they were demolishing it they would the group that look after dot hill they said that they rate that they developers said you can take as many bits of material if for dot hill as you, as you like so they scavenged a lot of the material and used it all decking and things like that to do a lot of the work around dot hill which is exactly where we're going now so we're leaving harley close now to take a left hand turn in and this brings us into the realm of dot hill so you can see again we've got that double footpath cycleway so the pathways are a lot better up you know this 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 neck of the woods really um now dot hill is was originally a um an estate um and a lot of the land it had a, its own dot hill hall um and the you can start to see on the left hand side there's lots of little fishing pools and stuff like that here but now the whole area is managed by um 
a it's become a nature reserve so it's actually um, managed by a group of volunteers and so much money has gone into you know um reclaiming this place and making it a great place to come and walk um they've built new footpaths they've improved the ponds the biodiversity etc um they've done so so well we've just crossed over seven drive now so now we're actually in the realms of um dot hill park as you can see it's a really nice kind of area here a lot and they've got a look at a tree trail etc it's a lot actually here and don't forget we've got those beautiful pools at dot hill as well and um, a very very popular place to come and have a walk around So as we come down the hill here, you can start to see Dot Hill Lake just on the left hand side coming here. Um, I think the one's called Tea Lake um, and you can see it now as we come around the corner. So it's quite a large area of open space here. Now this is the way up there. You can now see some beautiful wildlife on there, swans, um, ducks and God knows what else on there. Um, but you can see it there, really nice place to walk, walk there, especially on a day like today when the it's a, a nice spring morning and the sun is shining. So we're now coming out, we're now, see so we're following these footpaths now, it's absolutely riddled in footpaths, as long as you know where you are. The Silken Way is obviously not clearly signposted here, so I hope you'll watch this and at least you know where you're going. So we're coming down. We know it's at the bottom of Holly Close, that neck of the woods, really. So this is one of the paths that's been redone. You can see that's got a really good sort of surface on it. You can start to see the meadows of Dot Hill now coming in on the left-hand side. Look at that. It's beautiful meadows here in open space. It's surprising of how big the actual area is, really. So you can see we've got the back end of the houses here. Um, at Dot Hill, another little brook we're crossing here, look. And uh, I don't know if you noticed that man just kneeling down there just a few minutes ago. <laughs> but very busy, it's very busy here. And the meadow still continuing on the left hand side. Then there's in the forest, as you can see, a little bit further in the distance. Now, coming up on the left hand side, there's another bit of green space, and that's the road that will actually take you back to uh, towards Shoreditch. That, that path will take you to Shoreditch. So, we're now coming into the realms of Admiston now. And Admiston is quite a historic area, especially Admiston Spa. So Admiston Spa was actually a luxury hotel back in its day. Um, and the spa waters, believe it or not, from there, were actually supposed to have medicinal value and make you feel younger. So um, good luck to whoever bought that, that um, those properties there. Um, but you can see now, there's the uh, Bean Hill Brook in there now, we're going across and we're coming and this expanse of fence in here is the back of Spa Crescent, these beautiful large detached um, executive or Regency style residences, but also the clock the clock house etc parts of Admiston Spa have actually been um, converted into houses now and they've been there they've been converted a long time actually but you know one or two of them come up for sale now but um, you know we can see this fence look at that hedge that's just well it's not a hedge it's actually just a load of pine um, a load of pine trees but you can see how big they are you can see on the left hand side that again it shows how big this area is really with Dot Hill. Um, but we're coming now um, to the end of this section of the path now. So the Silken Way now goes off to the right hand side and we go down the slope and we are on the Market Drayton Railway now. So this is the line that went from Market Drayton then on to Stoke originally um, and this is the railway there that served that and went into Wellington so this pretty much now is uh, this is this is the Silken Way joined on here now but a great long distance um, footpath with just going over the top of the road out of Admiston, Admiston Road and we're continuing down 
and we have got we'll probably have Shaw Birch and Bratton sort of coming in. So I'd say Shaw Birch is to the left to the right, Bratton to the Bratton to the left. And you know you can get a bit of a move on along this path as you can see. Um it's a, as as you'd expect from a railway, nice and straight, decent a decent pathway. So we're uh, coming along here at a good rate now, aren't we? Um, you always got. I'm always ringing the bell and making sure that people um, people uh, get a good notice that I'm coming through. But great pathway this is, though. It goes, and you know, and you could literally walk from Shawbridge all the way into Wellington from there. It's just such a nice, such a nice pathway. So let's just see what we've got now. Um, yep, as you can see on the right hand side now, that's Hazelmere Village, that's actually Shawbridge. I don't think these are sure which configuration they need to be, really, to just, just go to the left, and that makes me sort of squeeze. I can't social distance now with that. So we're coming on, and the estate of Bratton, so that's off Bratton Lane, that is on the left hand side. So we're almost coming up on an embankment now, um, a railway embankment, but. In a minute, you're going to see the end of the Silken Way, the official end of the Silken Way, and that is earmarked with the trademark Silken Way wheel. Um, and you can just see, so here we are, you can see the houses now. It is in sight now, any minute now, that Silken Way wheel. And uh, it's been a good journey, it is. So don't forget, it's like 14 miles from end to end, north to South Telford. This is just the... Um, north section that we've um, covered from Sturchy Pools um, forward. I hope I've given you some uh, information on the route um, so you know exactly where you are. And um, look, here we go. You can just about see now there's the Silken Way wheel, and that marks the end of the Silken Way. I hope you've enjoyed that trip with us. Join us again for another bike trip. Take care. Bye bye.